and had no self-confidence at all. He often struggled completing any written work, but when he started using the iPad in class, it allowed him to develop those new skills and that new interest back in learning. He was completing more work than was expected of him, and he wanted to learn, he wanted to do more. He became a really independent pupil. He went on to win a national photography competition using his iPad. He took the photos, he edited them, and combined them to create a montage of pictures. In the initial term that the iPads were introduced, he made 266% more progress in literacy than was expected of him on prior attainment. The pupil moved on to secondary school in September. He asked me one thing, if he could take his iPad with him as it helped him so much. So, on there we do use our iPads for absolutely everything around our curriculum. It's not just the class-based learning that we focus on. We do a topic-based curriculum. We go out and about to actually hopefully allow our pupils to gain an experience that we can then link into our lessons. And part of that is allows our pupils to actually create their own resource banks. We found in the past that when we're in the classroom and our young pupils are going, oh, I need a picture, okay, what do you need a picture of? They'll, and then they go onto an image search. And then you're thinking, right, okay, here we go, this is going to take some time now. Because they've been searching for such a particular image that there's, say, what, 10 million return calls that come back up onto the screen, to which then we're looking at, is it the right one? Has it got the right background? Is it what is actually relating to the topic that they're actually trying to learn about? And now we're actually focusing on finding an image and not what we actually ask the young person to create something about. If we take our iPads out and we go out to say something local to us, which might be Clitheroe Castle, and we're doing things around turrets and castles, we, that young person can use their iPad, they can take pictures and, create, and take the pictures that they want to take, and they've got access to their own image bank. Needless to say, they can also record things as they're walking around. They could use videos, they've got the sound, there's all that interactivity. We're actually trying to dig down and trying to eliminate what it is actually the function that we want from the iPads and what the actual barrier is to that learning. Some of our pupils there, okay, we've got a couple of quotes. The iPads are fun and, more, and make learning more interesting. You know, I like using the iPads. I don't struggle with writing anymore. Part of what we do over at Westmoreland within the Willis Lab group is we try and dig down and actually try and find out what the function of the behaviour is. We're trying to actually work out what the actual problem is so that we can actually focus on the task that we're asking, asking them to do. We've not taken away discrete handwriting at all. We still do that because sometimes our pupils have the fear of, I can't spell, I haven't got the fine motor skills, historical factors that I'm not going to be able to do the task because somebody's already asked me to do this. Now if we can find a more creative, engaging way to do that, we can still show an evidence from that young person their understanding, and that's what we want from them. We want them to show their level of understanding and knowledge, not whether or not they can do a bit of letter formation when I'm working on something around castles. For us, we want to make sure that it's learning focused. We don't want to just make sure that it's that curriculum coverage. I talk about pupil engagement, or I'm going to talk about it now, because it's, for us, it's something that's increased massively. We do have behaviour incidents over at our school, but that now has significantly decreased ever since the introduction of the iPads. It's showing that our pupils want to be in class more. It's showing to us we've been able to report and actually call in data that we've got evidence that our pupils are staying in lesson more because we report on out of programme or out of sessions. And we've actually got a decrease in how many pupils are actually leaving the session and not wanting to learn. Now they've got the technology and now they've got the iPads. This isn't just the case of within discrete computing lessons. This is across the curriculum for us. And that's actually shown, especially within literacy, which is something that people turn around to us and say, well, what about your literacy lesson? What about your handwriting? Are those affected? Well, actually, yeah, they are affected, but we're actually having fantastic results within our literary, literacy lessons, and handwriting still happens. We don't just replace the books. This, in turn, is making the self-esteem of our pupils, you know, is, is raising, and the confidence is becoming stronger and stronger every day over there. So the variety of different apps that we use at Westmoreland to engage, inspire and help our pupils to achieve. I'm going to focus on 
apps which will help maybe help in literacy. And Rob is going to look at the creative and interactive apps after. So the first app I'm going to introduce you to is Book Creator. If you need one paid app, this is the app that you need. So Book Creator allows you to create interactive books in a variety of different styles. In the classroom setting, I use this on a daily basis and it can be used for a variety of different activities. Book Creator is a fabulous app for children with writing difficulties and those who are reluctant learners. Within, within this app, you can add a variety of different medias, including video, picture, music, your own voice, and it makes an interactive book. Low ability pupils in my class have met creating character profiles in a literacy lesson where they combine videos and pictures and their own voice and they were able to share this on iBooks to have an interactive book they can share with others. People who are also reluctant writers really enjoy this app because you can create comic books. Um, I use it in a variety of different lessons and we used it in one lesson where we were doing about ancient Greeks and they did a comic on ancient Greeks. Another example here where we did one on the three little pigs and one of the boys created an interactive book, um, comic book on the three little pigs. It's a core app that we use at Westmoreland and the pupils have created lots of different types of books. A new key feature they've re released recently is that it can read to the pupils, it can read their work back to them. So ch children who have difficulty reading their own work back to them and looking for mistakes, it reads it to them and they can look and find their own mistakes in it, developing their independence. Poplet is a really good app to organise your ideas. It's an app which you can, allows you to jot down ideas and sort them out visually. It helps those pupils with sequencing diff and ordering difficulties because they're able to do it logically. I use it regularly in my classrooms, it's accessible to all pupils. I've used it for a variety of different acti activities, such as gathering ideas, for example, facts about a topic we are looking at. Pupils created a poplar about when we were doing the heart and blood, and they showed me how the heart works and what stages we had. In other lessons, we use it in literacy, where they're producing a piece of writing. For example, this one, where a child was producing a piece of writing on a secret garden. They put their ideas and pictures onto it, and they were able to use that to help them sequence their idea within their writing. It's also great to use to assess pupils, get them to do a poplet at the beginning of a topic and add to it throughout, and you can see what they learn. The last one I'm going to talk about is Skitch. It's a really interactive app which allows pupils to annotate and write on pictures. Um, and you can take a photo anywhere and annotate it. It really benefits your dyslexic students due to its easy use, clear writing and annotation tools. I use it a lot within science um, and we've done used it to label forces and parts of a plant. It can also be used in literacy lessons like this example where pupils be describing what the vegetable looks like and then it helps them to write. Another time we've used it in literacy where they've been writing about themselves and they put labels on their face. Many of our pupils have difficulty using tools such as rulers due to their dyspraxia. Therefore, this app is great to remove that barrier to learning as well because they haven't got to use it. All the three apps I've talked about are simple and easy to use and can be used in a variety of different subjects and across the whole of the curriculum to engage pupils easily. I'm going to talk to you now about four different apps. I like to think they're a little bit on that next level of creativity. Now, we've shown you some of the examples of like what our pupils do. This, this one is actually something of introducing a new topic to our pupils from the members of staff. So I'll, I'll play it for a little short while. exciting sort of engagement and opening that door to learning for them. 
it's, it's an app there that's out there that's free on most of the modern iPads and iMacs and things like that that are out there. But equally, when we can use this, it's a, it's a free app, it's easy to use, you can cut, cut and edit things. One of the huge engagement opportunities for this is a lot of our pupils are coming to us now and we say to them, we say, what do you want to be when you're older? And they'll go, I want to be a YouTuber. And I'll go, right, okay. How can I now tailor what you want to do into my lessons? Right, okay, you've got an interest in me on YouTube. No, I'm not just going to open the door for you to use YouTube. But what I'm going to say to you is, well, okay, let's focus your learning around making videos. And a fantastic app for that is iMovie because it's so accessible. And it's accessible whether it's on the iMac but transferable to others as well. It allows them to review the things that they're interested in. It allows them to bring in different medias. Okay, I'm focusing around that barrier that they first and foremost might not want to learn about ancient Greeks, but they might actually want to be a YouTuber when they're older, so let's actually tailor them and learn those skills and do that cross-curricular learning. The next one that I'm going to look at is Chatterpix. Okay? So Chatterpix is out there, it's similar to like an old afternoon, one of the first ones that came out was like Morph, for those of you who remember that. Um, I'll play a little bit of an example of something that you can do. So this is relating to a bit of like healthy eating and a bit of science. Maybe delicious, but I am 35 grams of fat in me. Okay, so that's an example of one of our pupils there. All right. With that there, it's an example that you can actually utilize this app to actually make anything come to life. You know, it redefines that learning for us because it can be from social communication curriculum. You could have something to get our young pupils to actually have anything talk and come to life to them and request them to do anything. They can express what their knowledge and understanding through it. But equally, you could have their favourite characters come to life for them and ask them to do the work. Again, you could have their favourite characters actually explaining their work and asking them to come around and uh, say things like that. Moving on to the next one, we've got Pip Collage. It's a great app, this. People use it for personal reasons, we use it in education, equally businesses use it now as well. It's a fantastic app to bring things together, and we're, we use it quite a lot for our planning our thoughts as well, is that our pupils are able to bring together pictures, they're able to display them together on one piece of work, and they're able to explain what they're actually talking about or the thing that they're learning. It's great for storyboards, for planning a sequence. They can pull together memories of days out. They can identify people within their family, the work that they've done. They can talk about new experiences. It's, it's, it truly is a great app that our pupils use. So the next is Green Screen by Doing. We use the one actually by Doing, but there are other green screens out there. We like to think that this is learning anywhere in the universe. Okay? I, I want to have people come to me and say, I want to be an astronaut. Instead, they go, I want to be a YouTuber. But equally, again, I can tailor this to their interest. Some of our pupils will talk about anything. They'll talk about whether or not they want to be a wrestler. Well, okay, let's put you in the wrestling ring. Let's tailor a bit of PE around working around in that activity sound. Let's tailor a bit looking around geography. Okay? Where are our lines in the world? So they're certainly not where I'm coming from, surely. It's a nice user-friendly app. It does break down those barriers to learning because it is very accessible. It gives them experiences that they can evidence and document that they may never have the opportunity to do so, but equally they can do that in a safe learning environment. They can relate this to holidays or places they'd like to go to, so it is a nice part of building their interests as well. current technology and we always want to strive to offer our pupils the best opportunities that are available to them. Over the next few years we have a clear vision to continue to challenge technology further and look at other solutions which will help our pupils to succeed and overcome the barriers they may have. We also want to develop our digital leaders further. Currently we only have a limited amount of digital leaders in the school and we want to get more of them to give them more ownership for the technology room and school. They will then be able to support each other, to help each other with the technology, but also support staff. Finally, 
Similarly, we want to work on developing our own lesson resources further, using technology to be able to publish them to the wider audience and have the, to allow you to have the impact we have had on our pupils. When we asked our parents what they thought of the iPads and what impact they had seen on their children, one of our parents said this to me, that the strongest and best achievement from this pupil is making in technology there is nothing you can't do without a computer. The iPads they can use in class are amazing. One of the final things that we want you to take away from us is actually digging down on what are the barriers to learning. Once you can actually try and figure out and try and find out what the actual barrier is to learning, then how can I use technology to break this down? For us, the iPads have been truly revolutionary to our school. Okay? They've helped us out in many different ways. But equally, there are other solutions out there, and we don't deny that. But what we're here to tell you today is that our iPads really have broken down barriers, and we've used, utilised that technology to do um, creative, magical things with it. I'd like to thank you for listening to us. Um, that is our presentation today, but I believe there is some opportunity for questions, and Alistair at the back does have a microphone, and he will come really around, I believe. So if there's any questions, please feel free to ask. Hi, um, the use of iPads, what, um, have you come across problems off the top of use of it and what strategies do you use? Um, yeah, there are always going to be the off-topic side, uh, the downside to it. We have, we have like a user acceptance policy within our school. Um, so we have clear guidelines for our pupils to follow and they sign an agreement um, and they honour that because they'll equally get reward time with it um, so it's very much built into our rewards and behaviour system and our pupils do really respect it because they value, because we're an iPad for child school, they really do value that use. Um, so the very little misuse of off-topic work actually happens um, because they've really built in their ownership of their own iPad as opposed to it's just a, a Static 10 minutes here of the excitement. I've got the iPad, quick, let's do all sorts of different things. We've got other opportunities within the day that's built in for them to be able to do that and release that time where they can go to computer club at break time and, and then utilise it for them. We were wondering about your uh, student who went to secondary and asked if he could take the iPad with him. Was he able to? He went on to one of the, um, well, not one of our schools for secondary, but his next school got him an iPad ready to use it. Brilliant. And did the students get to take their iPads home? No, because well, um, some schools use it where they can take them home, but because as a school we bought the iPads for them, at the minute they are in school. But a lot of the pupils um, log into the apps at home. We use some like Doodle Maths for maths and things, and they log in and use them on their own iPads at home as well. Yeah, we equally try and look to think about if the PPI had to go home, will they come in the next day? So if any of our pupils forget to bring it in, we don't want them to feel that they're the odd one out in a session, because that then could unfortunately have made that young person go into maybe a crisis and be upset, and we don't want that. Yeah, we're not purely an iPad school, as in it's the only things that we have. Um, within our classrooms, um, we have uh, the teacher still has a laptop, and um, we have an iMac as well in the classrooms, as well as we do have, dependent on the classroom, between two and four computers um, in the classrooms as well. So we do have a real range. Uh, equally within our iPads, we do have the ID client, so you can remote onto our Windows-based server as well so that the pupils get that dual usage so they can either one be using the apps for the ipad or two they can then remote onto our windows based server and then just using the normal start menu um, equally as well so we try and do that multi-use so we're not just trying to tailor their learning to one type of technology we're trying to make sure that they are geared up when they leave us that they could just go to a windows solution or they could go to an imac solution as if they've been or had experience in all that we're trying to set them up for success in the future